what is going on everybody out there? This is Jake James Lugo. Welcome to the channel and welcome to this brand new episode of JJ's One Man Podcast. So let's talk about some Thor Love and Thunder. I just got a chance to see it last night or technically yesterday afternoon because I went to the first showing of this movie over at my local AMC theater, which was pretty cool. I actually went to the Dolby Digital Theater instead of the IMAX, which I usually do for Marvel movies. This one was a little bit different because they have it where the seats actually shake as opposed to just having just a giant screen. So either way, I know it's a taste thing, but still, let's talk about this movie. Now, overall, okay, I had a chance to sleep on this for a bit, and initially, I thought I was just okay with the movie, but then after sleeping for a night and then thinking about this movie a little bit more, I actually kind of feel like I don't like this movie a little bit more than what I initially thought. And the reason being is because not only did I not like the ending too much, but there was also a couple other things that I felt was kind of mediocre and not really that great. And there was a couple other things as well, which we'll get into in just a second, that I felt was a little bit below par for Marvel. For whatever reason, Phase 4 and Marvel, a lot of the movies that I've been really excited about or ones that I was hyped up to see haven't been all that great. Even Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, I thought it was okay. I thought it was good in some parts, but I wasn't like feeling the same way that I felt when I was watching some of the previous phase movies in Marvel, like when I came out of Infinity War or Endgame, when I came out of Captain America, the Winter Soldier, when I came out of watching Civil War, or films like that, you know, just as like quick examples, and other movies too as well, I felt a little bit better than what I did for the entirety of phase four. But about Thor Love and Thunder specifically, what are some of the things that I felt that the movie did good? I actually thought that the rock music and this whole like leaning heavy into like this metal is type of like, you know, thing with Thor going on in the later phases of the Marvel Universe. Uh, I think that's actually pretty good. A lot of people love rock music. I think they go a little bit overboard with the Guns N' Roses. I think Taika Waititi actually, you know, he loves Guns N' Roses clearly. I think he used it a little bit too much because there's various different Guns N' Roses uh, tracks that are used throughout the film. And some spots it sounds cool. Some spots it's a little bit overblown. Besides that, though, what about Thor himself? I think that the direction they're going with Thor is kind of meh. And the reason why I say that it's kind of meh is because clearly they don't seem like they have a really good direction of where they wanted to go with the character after Ragnarok or even after the previous Thor movie. It's just weird. Well, technically, no, the previous Thor movie was Thor Ragnarok. So the previous Avengers movies where, you know, we saw Thor in a specific way and like he was all big and fat and stuff. But now that he's gotten back into shape, he's back to being old Thor for the way that he was originally. Uh, just the direction for the character, like who he is and what he's actually like in relation to everybody else in the MCU. It just feels a little weird. I mean, I don't like the direction that they're going with now. Granted, this is going to get a little spoiler heavy. So brace yourselves. You know, I should have said that at the beginning of this video here. But I don't like the fact of where we see Thor at the end of Thor Love and Thunder. I feel like it seems a little cliche at this point where there seems to be a lot of this type of thing going on with Disney movies or just the MCU in general where we're starting to see a lot of father figures with their daughters. And I don't mind that, you know, a couple times and for a few characters, but we're starting to see that pop up a little bit more than what I would actually like because it almost trivializes that type of thing. It makes it less special. It's not necessarily a bad thing to do with a character, especially for a character where maybe you don't know where to go with him or they have like, you know, certain like dad type of qualities. But I always felt like Thor should be the king of Asgard. I feel felt like he should actually take up his place on like what Odin uh, did originally before him. And granted, they've addressed some of that in the previous movies. But still, I felt like it should lead to the point where he actually is leading his people of Asgard, where he should actually be on Earth with everybody else so people can know where Thor is for the Avengers movies and actually, you know, take up the mantle of being king of Asgard. I felt like that would be cool. Not to take anything away from Valkyrie, which we'll get to in a second, but I've always felt like that should be the trajectory that we should be going on with Thor. Not this whole kind of like, you know, aimlessly wandering around character that is just doing different things in every single movie like there's almost no consistency with it he's just kind of there and he's just doing stuff and it just kind of is irrelevant either way though what about some of the other characters i've mentioned valkyrie valkyrie is fine in this movie she just feels a little bit underutilized she doesn't really do as much she does have some neat action sequences i think if anything the trailers made her look a little bit more badass than what she actually is in the film uh she's definitely funny <laughs> this movie has a real big like tone and consistency where there's some parts that are really serious and then there's like immediately the next millisecond where things get ridiculously hilarious or ridiculously like comedy and sometimes the jokes don't always land I think that they maybe linger on some of the jokes way too much or they go back to the well too many times 
But with Valkyrie specifically, she does a lot more comedy stuff. And she's kind of got like that arrogant, like, you know, nonchalant attitude, which we've seen from Valkyrie in the past, but never to this extent where it's like, you know, they're going really overboard with this. And they're trying to really play up the fact that she's bored with being the king of Asgard. They don't call her Queen Valkyrie. They call her King Valkyrie because that's the title that she's taken up. And I'm fine with that. I don't think it has anything to do with an LGBTQ thing. I think it's more that just the title just leading Asgard. I feel like, okay, just saying king is just a little bit more simple. That could be a cultural thing. It has nothing to do with anything else. As far as anything else going on with her character, again, she doesn't really do that much in this film. At some point towards the third act, like after they're getting ready for like the final battle between Thor and Gore the God Butcher, which we'll get to in a second, uh, Valkyrie gets sidelined. And I felt like maybe they shouldn't have sidelined her. Like she got really badly injured at one point during a big battle and they brought her back to Earth. But she should have gone back to fight Gore with uh, Thor there. Gore Thor. I'm all like tongue twisted. She should have gone with Thor Odin's son to go fight Gore the God Butcher again. I felt like that would have been uh, a little bit better of a choice. It would have made much more sense because she's just not going to sit there. Granted, she just got stabbed like once by Gore the God Butcher. I think she'd be ready to go back into battle. Uh, and they kind of like, you know, wave hand away it, you know, at that point right before Thor actually goes to, to the final battle. But still, I would have rather I've seen her there to help out everybody else. Now, let's talk about Jane Foster, the mighty Thor. Okay. This is a big deal. A lot of people were hyping up this uh, character now, and it's great to see Natalie Portman. We love Natalie Portman out here. That's always going to be our, uh, was it our queen of Naboo, straight up. But the thing about this is that while there is some good stuff with the character that's pulled directly from the comics, I felt like the way that she ends, and at least her story arc ends in this movie, was kind of unneeded. I didn't want to see her just die the way that she did. Like, I get, like, the poetic, like, nature of it, like, the arc, and they kind of foreshadow it with her spending so much time with Valkyrie, but it's it just, it felt like I didn't really need to see that. I didn't want to see that. I didn't think that they needed to kind of kill her off there. They kind of, you know, build up this, like, romance between Thor and her and, and Jane, and it, it's cute in a couple moments. It seems like they're really going to be a couple by the end of the movie, and they kind of just cut that off at the very end. Granted, there's some very heavy emotional stuff there, but... I still didn't think that the way her story ended with her dying and then going to Valhalla at the end post or mid credit scene, um, it's just it's it just felt like a bad taste in my mouth. And I slept on it because initially I was like totally fine with it. And then I thought about it a little bit more and I was like, damn, man, like, why do we have to lose Jane like that? Like we could have had the mighty Thor with some more stuff with Thor himself going on adventures together. They could have been a couple adopting that uh, girl that Gore brings back to life, which, again, we'll get to in a second. Like it, it just felt weird. It was a weird choice for me so I didn't like it as much maybe there's some other people out there in the comments that could probably justify that a little bit more or get the discussion going on in the comment section below but for me after thinking about it I wasn't a fan of that I think her powers are pretty cool with the way that uh, Mjolnir is actually broken up and she could actually throw out particles of Mjolnir and then call them back I thought that was pretty dope uh, her backstory for how she becomes the mighty Thor made sense and I don't think it's one for one accurate for what they did in the comics I think the justification in the comics, I think, is a little bit better, where her justification was is that uh, there should always be a Thor once Thor became unworthy to wield the hammer. Um, I felt like they probably should have gone in some more of that direction, but I don't know how that would have worked within the MCU. But for what it is, for her origin, I think it's fine, but everything else wasn't a fan of. Um... Let's talk about some of the other uh, characters. Again, Gore the God Butcher, let's, let's start with him. Gore, I think, is pretty cool because we got Christian Bale. Christian Bale's a hell of an actor. He's acting his ass off in a lot of these scenes, like straight up. He is really bringing his A game. It's just the material that he has to work with, I think it's kind of meh. It's just... It's such a, a different tone from what the rest of the movie is trying to be because the, the movie starts out with very dark stuff, like really heavy stuff. And once you get to the point where Gore meets his first god and he gets the, the necromancer sword, uh, it starts to change and like clash in tones. And it's just weird. Now, don't get me wrong. Every time we see Gore the God Butcher and he's looking menacing and he's got like those orange eyes and stuff, looks badass, looks phenomenal, looks great. His powers where he's able to travel in shadows or call upon beast and shadows, that looked really cool. There's some great moments that he has when he's fighting. I think he's maybe a little bit too overpowered or a little inconsistent with how he actually is fighting Thor because he's not really a powerhouse. He should actually gain his power from the weapon itself, which he kind of does, but he shouldn't be able to throw punches with Thor like that. He should be straight up be able to fight with the sword itself that gives him his strength because Thor him as you could tell like he's ridiculously buff he should be able to like pummel Gore the God Butcher with his fist if they weren't having any weapons in the combat but either way he still looked freaking cool 
by the time the movie ends and you actually get the conclusion of his story, which it sucks to see him get killed off like that, but when they get to the point where they're actually trying to reach eternity. Now, this is the first time that I could think of that they're actually showing eternity in the MCU. They've mentioned eternity in the past, but actually seeing it, and it's comics accurate, like it's almost one for one what you see in the comics. That looks cool, but with uh, Gore reaching his uh, the conclusion there to actually make a wish, uh, a lot of the motivations for people trying to stop him made sense because he was going to like wish away all the gods. But at the very end, it just felt weird that he brought back his daughter to life because, okay, he's dying there. Like, why bring back his daughter if he's not going to be around to be with her? Like, I just felt like that was a weird decision. And it went into a direction with Thor that, again, like I mentioned before, I didn't like. I didn't think it was a good idea. So by the time he dies, I think the final battle where it actually goes on on this planet, it looks cool because it's all black and white. And the way that they play around with color is freaking dope. Gore looks good. Everybody else in the combat actually looks good. Um, the one thing that I will say related to Gore that I didn't like was the very like final parts of the final battle where the kids are there, all the different Asgardian kids are there and Thor is like giving him his power in order to fight all the monsters that Gore is summoning. I didn't like that because it didn't make sense for Thor's powers. I don't remember him being able to give the power of Thor to other people like that because funny enough, I, uh, I saw another review on YouTube that mentioned this is like, why didn't he just do that with the Avengers when Thanos was showing up? Like he should have been able to do that with a Stormbreaker at one point. It just didn't make any sense. The other thing, too, I think at some point, maybe because there's been mention of a four hour cut of this movie, maybe they explain that in some deleted scene because it just comes out of random, like out of nowhere, literally. And I don't remember any of this being in any of the MCU movies. And I've seen all of them, everything related to Thor, all the Avengers films. And every time he's showed up or he's mentioned, never talked about this, never had this ability. Uh, I don't even think Odin really had that ability other than giving his power there to that. But we never see uh, Thor use something like that. So it just was really out of place for me and it made the kids powerful and some of it was pretty kind of like played for gags it was really goofy but again just watching it and then thinking about it now afterwards after sleeping on it it just was something that I just don't think was done very well it could have been handled a little bit better I would have loved to see Valkyrie instead of the kids there maybe the kids are get out of the way like she helps save the kids and then comes back to help Thor uh, when Jane finally shows up as Mighty Thor after, you know, it's revealed that she has cancer and all this stuff, we all know that like, the stakes are really high up now. But again, it's just that series of events wasn't really resonating with me. So a couple other things, too, to mention about the film. Uh, Korg and the other gods that we see in like places. I forgot the exact name of where we see these other gods, but we get to see Zeus. We get to see a lot of the other mythological gods that are in the MCU. Uh, they look cool. Korg looks cool. They finally reveal that he is gay. He actually, his race is, uh, was it made all of men? And they actually reproduce by just holding hands in a volcano or over molten lava. I was totally fine with that. You know, I don't think they've ever really mentioned like what he is or how he is exactly in previous films. Films, but it was something I was like, okay, yeah, I'm totally cool with that. I don't even think like it's something that would really rub people the wrong way. If anything, it actually gives another dimension to the MCU, you know, of how other races probably act and other races probably like interact with each other or reproduce or whatever else like that. Uh, it just seemed totally fine to me. But with the gods themselves, I think that the idea of them being very arrogant and very like, you know, nonchalant about their followers and about humanity and all the races that worship them and stuff, I thought that was good. But it didn't link, it didn't actually come to play or at least, you know, get fully fleshed out in a way that I thought was satisfactory by the time the movie ended. Because we do see that original god that Gore killed in the very beginning. We see how, like, you know, much of a jerk he was. And I co totally get Gore's motivation at that point. But then you see the other gods when you meet up with Zeus. And it's even said, Thor mentions it, that he's scared of Gore the God Butch and he's trying to put on a face with all the other gods there during this event and stuff. And we never really got more of that. It, it would have made more sense if he actually, if they actually dived a little bit more into that other than just like the quick, like, you know, t about face and then like a whole big battle goes on. That's one thing I should say now that I think about it. The pacing in this film is a little bit quick in a lot of places. Like, you know, things just move at like such a sonic speed pace that, you know, you think that you're probably going to get a good amount of certain stuff that is really good, but then all of a sudden we're on to the next thing. You get a good amount of tone in one section, then now we're on to the, like, the comedy. And it's like this juxtaposition with some of this stuff, it just feels really weird and awkward, and I don't think it works, you know, for the majority of cases. And I think other people are probably going to feel that once they see this movie. Those that just want to go in just having fun and just, like, mindlessly just watching what the movie gives to you, I think they'll enjoy it. 
to an extent. But if you've been following the MCU for a while and you start like looking for other things like this, you're probably not going to like it as much. You probably feel very similar to me. Um, one other thing I should mention too, and I keep saying that, but now I just thought about it. Uh, a lot of other like MCU references aren't really here. Like, I mean, we do get like, you know, some comedic bits where they retell the, the story of Thor Ragnarok in like this little play. And it's good to see Matt Damon and Sam Neill there. It's goofy. It's funny. And it fits, you know, in this like random scene, which I think they linger on too long. But it is funny to see that stuff. And as far as like other MCU stuff related to the greater universe, we do see how Asgard is turned into like a tourist attraction, which I think is kind of weird. But, you know, what else are they going to really do with Asgard at this point in order to live and kind of like sustain themselves? We don't really get mention of a lot of other things other than maybe the flashbacks between Jane and Thor. And there's like a passing Nick Fury mention, you know, just randomly of like why their relationship broke down, which made sense. You know, they kind of like give a little bit more reasoning of why we don't see Jane in the majority of the films at that point point um and then i think that's about it that i could think of off the top of my head i will say some of the more heavier scenes with jane like you know talking about and revealing that she has cancer i thought were really well acted by natalie portman again though the juxtaposition between that stuff and then the comedy that comes like immediately right afterwards is a little weird but i wish that they kind of like you know build things a little bit more around that a little bit more and we got to see more of jane and and having jane survive at the end i think would have been cool the final thing I also I should say too is the other after credit scene, which is with Zeus, where they show Hercules, and that's going to be the next big baddie for Thor's next movie. I don't think we're going to see Hercules in the upcoming Avengers movie eventually, like whatever comes afterwards for Phase Four or Phase Five. But if that's going to be the next big baddie for him to fight, I think that's cool. But at this point, like, why would Zeus? even at this point, like, want to take revenge against Thor or, like, try to make humanity fear the gods a little bit more. It just, again, it felt really weird, but we'll see how that plays out whenever this next movie gets made because who knows what's going to happen with Thor at this point. We got Dad Thor now at the very end where he's watching over God's, uh, I mean, uh, God's, uh, Gore's uh, daughter. He adopted her as his adopted daughter, and they're going around the galaxy fighting things. It's just, again, I, I don't know what they're going to do with Thor right now at this point. Um, as far as leading into Phase 5, there, it just doesn't seem like they're connects to a lot of stuff of what's going on with the overarching story of what's happening with the MCU. There's no, like, connections to, like, alternate realities. There's no mention of, like, um, oh, my God, uh, uh, was it Kang the Conqueror? There's no mention of any of the other, like, Avengers and stuff. Oh, here, I almost completely forgot, and it's perfect to bring this up now. The Guardians of the Galaxy are just kind of there for a brief bit, and then they just leave. Like, there was almost no point in including the Guardians of the Galaxy here. I would have much rather had it that if they just showed up at the very beginning, uh, drop Thor off, and then just leave. Because when they're here, they don't really do much. They don't really say much. And, like, it's not even really that funny. Like, they try to play up some laughs, and they're just kind of there, and it's just whatever. Not much comes from it. So, I would have rather not have the Guardians there and just see them in their next upcoming movie, which is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. But anyway... Those are my overall thoughts about Thor Love and Thunder. I think that I dislike this movie more than I initially thought. I think that maybe you should still see it if you're following the MCU. Uh, if you're a Thor fan, then maybe you might like this one a little bit more than I do now. But overall, I feel like it could have been better. I feel like, you know, Phase 4 has been very weird overall. But those are just my thoughts about Thor Love and Thunder. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts about the movie, if you had a chance to see it yet, or if you're going to be seeing it soon. What other stuff you want to see from the MCU going into Phase 5, if you think like this movie will have a big impact on it, which I don't think it will, but let me know about this stuff down below in the comment section. Don't forget to leave a like on this video, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I got brand new reviews coming up very soon, more gameplay videos, and a lot of other great, surprising stuff that I know you guys are going to love. But with that being said, I will talk to all of you again very very soon. Peace out and stay epic, everybody.